younger, so not all the time. Also, so whenever you need him, he just poops out of existence, kind of like my sewing box. Whenever I need it. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> but I need to sew my pants! Whenever I don't need it, it just in anywhere. Why? I don't know about your sewing box. That's your house, but <laughs> but um, I, it, it happens. It happens with everything. Even things that we need, like you said. Sometimes I'll need a pen, and then it'll, it'll disappear. Sometimes I'll need a uh, um, a bolt for the tripod, and it'll be vanished. You know, I, it, things things always happen. But we have to make sure that we're able to learn those certain lessons, so that way we're able to change the way that we have to do things. Change the way that what items we might need. If it's a sewing kit, maybe we don't have a sewing kit, but we have duct tape, you know, or something else, something that will help us out. A bobby pin or a safety pin. Maybe those things will help us out, you know. That always happens in life. If Scott had taken another approach to this new world, like, let's say once he met Lace, instead of just being as like as calm as he possibly could in that moment because usually you just start screaming asking why there's a smiling cat because they don't have the facial muscles to do that uh well what if he more just ignored links one thing that is a standard in the book it's something that is a theme throughout the whole thing is whatever choices you make there are consequences even if you make no choice, there's the part after the cringe forest where Scott is in the center of the field and he's sitting there and he's crying and he doesn't want to move. He tells the world, I will not move. You can't make me. And then all of a sudden, the ground below him opens up and he falls into Xernian Kingdom. Even that, he had no control over. That was the consequence. Now, if he would have changed and did something else, if he would have gone somewhere else, like let's say, um, try to go through the forest, he wouldn't have ended up in Zernian, uh, Zernian Kingdom, right? So, no matter what, our choices or lack of choices always affect what's going to happen to us in the future. Can multiple children see this world? Like any child, like let's say it's a five-year-old and they just poof into this world. Or does it show up when children are trying to have a coping mechanism? Like for parents divorcing, deceased parent, or something like that? Sonomia uh, itself is, it's not a world that, that just shows up whenever you, whenever you have an issue. It's, it is a dream world. It's for everybody, everybody goes into Sonomia. The only thing is, with Scott's situation, because he needs it so badly, because he is in such a uh, depressed state that he, his mind, he needs to get it fixed. So that's why he was forced into it in a different way. Normally we go to sleep, we're in the dream world. In the beginning of the book, in the first chapter, um, Scott went into Sonoma a couple of times where he just dreamed and he was flying around and all this stuff. He was able to control what he was doing. But later on, when he tried to force himself not to sleep, and he fell into his toy chest, and he fell into the dream world, he, now he himself is in it. There's no way out of it unless he goes through what he has to go through. It's forcing him to deal with the emotions that he has. Why does Lynx just pop out of existence like that? It's mean. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I am not going to do any spoilers. You will find out at the end of the book. Fine. You definitely will find out at the end. Fine. <laughs> All right. Okay, and now we're going to get questions from Scott, the inspiration for the book, and uh, the one child who has read the whole book. So, Scott, what kind of questions do you have for your dad? Um, there are two questions that I have in mind. What, the first one is, why is there so much emotion in in this masterpiece of a book? I, <laughs> um, first off, thanks for calling it a masterpiece. I wouldn't call it that, but... Uh, it is a great book, nonetheless. It has okay. 
he's begging for Christmas love. So, <laughs> no, what, why is there so much emotion? Uh, there's a lot of emotion because life is emotion. The whole purpose for me to write this book is because I wanted to know what your emotions would be in this type of situation. I wanted to see how you would feel. And the more I went through the book, the more I realized how much emotion parents sometimes neglect. They sometimes forget that uh, children are going through things that we might not realize that they are. You know, I wanted, especially for a child to want to talk to their parents about the book. Like when you finished the book, you came to me and you asked me all of these questions about what's going to happen, is, could this happen, is this going to happen to me? Uh, I feel sad because of this, could this change? And that's really what I wanted between a child and a parent. I wanted the child to be able to, to ask the parent questions. I wanted to push that. Everything. And the second question is, there's a character in the book called Michael. Where did the inspiration for that character come from? Uh, Michael. Michael... The inspiration for Michael came from those people who you can't say. There are those times where it's, it's hard to help out people. And sometimes you could try all you want, but you're not going to be able to. There are, have been times, especially in my life, where I tried to help somebody and either they didn't want to be helped or they couldn't receive the help or situations just weren't what they were supposed to be. But one thing that Michael did try to do was Michael tried to help out Scott. And it's just a reminder that even if you're unable to help somebody, you could still use those mistakes, those things as lessons. Just like us as parents try to tell you stories that we've had in our past, so you could learn the lessons from our mistakes. Okay. All right, and that's all the questions that the kids have had. Uh, I would like to thank Maria Natoli from the Bookery for allowing us to use this space. Uh, the Bookery is located at Atlas Mall in Glendale, Queens. I will attach the uh, link for their website on the uh, YouTube page. Uh, I also would like to thank the children for asking me those wonderful questions. I'll add his channel maybe to the bottom of the link. Okay, it depends. We'll see. I have to look at. I have to look at his information first. Uh, uh, I would also like to thank my amazing illustrator Joseph Reutemann for the wonderful drawings that he did, including this cover that is about to be shown. So for the first time, this is the cover for Sodomia: The World of Dreams. There you go. And there it is, the cover for Sonomia, The World of Dreams. Uh, it will be released this September. Be on the lookout for more information when it comes to autograph signings. I believe I'll be doing an early release with the bookery, and we'll see you there. Right. Thank you very much. Bye.